Thank you, Lord. Don't you love Jesus? He's better than we think he is. Hallelujah. His joy is our strength. Let's all stand. Father, we offer this offering right now. We bring it. Jesus, as your word says in Hebrews, here men that die receive the tithe, but there, as our great high priest forever, you receive the spiritual substance of what's being done from the hearts of your people tonight as a sweet-smelling savor. And, Lord, I thank you that you place upon this offering and upon the act of faith tonight from your people the high priestly blessing, that which the blood is speaking over their lives on the mercy seat, the mercy of God for their lives and for those that they minister to. Let it to flow to them, flow through them, and let it flow, Father, to others. We honor you. May this offering bring honor to you. May it go forth, meet the needs of the people across this earth, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, you can be seated. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hey, Ron, why don't you come down here and uh, introduce Lonnie and just say a word about the uh, uh, upcoming uh, Firestarters uh, broadcast you guys are going to be having. I'll let Ron do this because, amen. I'll hold the mic while you talk. <laughs> Come on up here, Lonnie. Is it correct, correct uh, pronunciation, Pele or Pele? Pele. Okay. Yeah. I might have thought maybe you were French. You were Pele. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, <laughs> this is our dear brother Lonnie from Kerman. Kerman. Yes, Kerman. Oh, and wow. so he uh, he's a, a wonderful Christian comedian. And so he's going to come on fire starters in the morning. The 20th, is it? Yeah. The 20th. And so... Um, we want to come and just have a great time and laugh. It's, it's good to laugh, isn't it? Amen. We love the medicine of the Lord when we get to laugh. And we've got a man of God here that's going to just make us laugh for I don't know how long, however long we go on. But uh, we'd love for you to join and anybody that you might know that can come on that Thursday morning at at 1030. And, uh, I was talking to my chest, I guess. At 1030 and uh, on that Thursday morning on the 20th, and come and join us and be uh, not only the amen corner, but come and laugh. Come and have a good time. You know, after all this warfare and battle stuff we're talking about and going through all the time, it's good to laugh. Amen. So uh, would you like to share a word, brother? Or? Uh, okay. uh, I, I, I'm glad these, uh, the power of Facebook. <laughs> I met uh, Brother CJ through uh, Facebook and Brother Ron and uh, I'm excited, super excited. The Lord is just really opening the doors for me to take it. It's not just a, uh, I've been asking him Lord, more and more, not just to let me perform for the folks, but let me be able to minister to the folks as well. And uh, that people will get something out of the laughter and walk out uh, changed. Yeah. Hey, Amen. I, I, I remember when I first started doing comedy, I took my clean comedy into a nightclub and after the show, a brother came up to me crying. And I'm like, what's up, dude? He goes, man, I, I just couldn't see how you were so clean. Not even a dirty word came out of your mouth in this nightclub. And he began to tell me how he used to go to church. And I said, well, you know something? Jesus is still here that you were the one that walked away. And I believe that Jesus is still here waiting for you to come on back. So uh, it's good. We can laugh. We can, you know, I've been into some churches where they look so sour-faced, huh, that their lips were so low, they, they could suck a marble out of a gopher hole. <laughs> but I tell you what, I feel the presence of the Lord here in Madera tonight. Woo. Uh, I'm just excited to be here. I look forward to uh, hearing the word tonight. So if you can, tell your friends, once they put out the post, share it with everybody. And let's see if we can maybe, who knows, pack this house out and, and give God all the glory for, the, for laughter. Amen? Yeah, yeah. We know that uh, Thursday mornings are tough for people that work. But for those that aren't working, then uh, bring them on along, praise God, because we're going to have a great time. 
Amen. That's good, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Thank you. July 20th, Thursday morning. Good to have you, Lonnie. Bless you, brother. Nice to meet you. All right. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah. One more thing. One more thing. Can I tell you about Mike? If you can't come, you can watch it on YouTube after CJ edits it and, and share it with people that way, too. Yep. All right. There it is. It'll be live on Facebook, and then it'll be on YouTube the next day. So, anyways, yeah, we need to take advantage of um, the different stuff. Like our church, we also, for those of you that don't know, um, we have, if you want to download on your phones, we have an app, the Believer's Church of Madeira app. You can download on your phone, and um, <clears throat> we post every week. We update every week um, the services, uh, audio services, uh, the messages that were done. So some of you don't know that. Just get in your Apple Store or whatever, Play Store or whatever you have on your phone, and just type in Believer's Church of Madeira, and, and uh, you can put it on your phone. You can just listen to, to as much word as you want to listen to. Amen? So... A lot of good stuff with social media, amen? Missed you guys this morning. Um, I watched online, so there's another cool thing about it. I was sitting in the fireworks booth over there watching online, watching Dad preach, and that was a good word that you preached, by the way, man. I mean, it was kind of one of those words where it was like just it's time to step up to the plate and uh, step out of the box and uh, walk in love and let God use us as we walk in love, amen? And so that was a good message this morning. That's a good one to feed on for a while. Amen. Lord, we just thank you so much for your love, for your grace, your mercy, your glory, your anointing, your power. We thank you, Father, that you give us wisdom, revelation, and knowledge of you tonight. Hallelujah. And Lord, I thank you that you've gathered us together tonight, Lord. And Father, I don't take this gathering in vain, Lord, but I take this gathering as a very powerful night, a very powerful day today, Father, that we will gather together, that we have gathered together as Christians and as believers, Lord. And Lord, I thank you that as we gather together tonight, there's so much power in here, Father God, and that power is released into the marketplace outside these walls as we proclaim as we decree as we declare the word of the lord tonight hallelujah and father i thank you that tonight that you have shown me and, and spoken to me what you want me to share tonight lord and father as i share tonight lord i thank you that all of us including myself receive it in our hearts lord but we're also doers of it father god and lord i'm asking you for revelation wisdom and knowledge tonight lord i'm asking you to speak to our spirits holy spirit have your way in our lives we yield our lives to you we say have your way we say do what you want to do say what you want to say lord and father i thank you that this word tonight this prophetic word that you've given me tonight lord I thank you that people and myself, we receive it tonight with soft hearts, Lord. And Father, I thank you that you, Father God, give us what to say tonight, and, 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 and you show us by your Spirit, Lord, what it is you want to do in these last days, Lord. We are yielded to you tonight. We are open to you tonight, Holy Spirit, and we give our lives fully to you tonight, Lord. We love you and honor you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, the Lord just spoke to me earlier tonight, and he said that, he said that Sunday nights here are going to be more prophetic than ever. And, um, <clears throat> you know, Sunday mornings are cool and good, and, you know, a lot of people are still in the religious deal of going to church on Sunday morning, and, and that's it, and all that stuff. And, but see, that's going to change when the glory hits. <laughs> and Sunday nights, every seat will be packed when the glory starts to manifest in full operation. And uh, so, you know, that's going to change, and, and I know that's going to happen and all that, and, and I'm thankful for everybody that's here tonight. You're hungry for the Word. You want to hear what God says. But I'm telling you, Sunday nights is really, um, you know, it's really a prophetic night here at our church, and it's been, been like that for several years on Sunday nights, and I just don't see why people stay home on Sunday night. I don't, I don't understand. Um, and, uh, well, anyways, but I just... I, I, I feel with the next year or so here on Sunday nights, there's going to be some real prophetic things said uh, within this next year. Uh, by the time, actually, I should say it this way: by the time the first of the year comes around, I really feel like from then until uh, from now until then that there's going to be some real prophetic things said on Sunday night. Well, why Sunday night? I don't know. Uh, I guess I'll ask God more myself because I just heard Him say that to me tonight. So I haven't really got to like seek Him out on that yet that much. But but I just really feel like. He's going to start doing some things on Sunday night to prepare people that come uh, uh, for the greater outpouring and for the things that are getting ready to take place 
um, and not just uh, worldwide, but in your neighborhoods, your families, and things like that. There's going to be some things said. I really believe that. So, you know, and I, and I, and I, and I just want to be honest with you. A lot of you have known me for years, and, and some of you know me well enough that you know I'm not a liar. And, and uh, you know, I don't get up here and just say things to say things. I, I honestly, if I had nothing to say tonight and, and the Lord didn't want to say anything through me, I'd just tell Dad I don't have anything. I'm not going to say anything, and I wouldn't preach. I mean, I've done that before. So, uh, you know, I, I'm just being honest with you. I know when the Lord's speaking to me, and that's what he's saying to me tonight. And there's going to be some things that are going to be said on some Sunday nights coming up. They're going to be real prophetic, and they're going to be game changers. Oh, man, I'll say it that way. And uh, uh, the Holy Spirit will say it that way, I should say. And, and so I really believe that. And the Lord's been talking to me uh, here recently about Madeira. And obviously, this is my promised land. This is where God's called me. Uh, this is where... Uh, he wants me to be, and this is where my family's at, and all that good stuff, and my friends, my, my brothers and sisters in Christ. And uh, he's been talking to me about Madeira. And last Thursday, he spoke to me Thursday morning while I was in my quiet time. He spoke to me, he said that Madeira is a glory habitation. And he said that to me, and it just, it, it, it just blessed me. I'm sitting there, and I heard him say I said yes. And so uh, <clears throat> he started speaking to me about that. And, you know, a habitation is a place where, where something is, is set or, or uh, you, you, it resides. Or, okay, for instance, your home is your habitation. That's where you live. I mean, that's, that's, that's where you're at. That's where your stuff's at. That's where things go down. You know, you're at home more probably than any other place. And, and that's where things happen. Well, it's, that's, that's where the glory of God is. He said that Madeira is a, a, a place, a glory habitation. His glory is going to be known in the city of Madeira, California. And this isn't something that I'm wishful thinking about. This isn't something that I'm hoping for. This is something that I know is going to happen. And this is something that I know is happening right now. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you, <clears throat> a lot of this talk about the glory and all that, when, when the glory of God moves in, He usually don't come in unless there's unity. And He usually don't come in unless there's unity. Praise God. And <clears throat> I'm watching, and there's things, I, and so maybe some of you have some things that I don't know about that you've seen maybe uh, here in town with other ministries or other believers, maybe some friends that you have that go to another fellowship or something like that. You've been seeing God. I've been hearing, and I've been seeing uh, God starting to bring people from other bodies in this uh, uh, city together for certain, uh, certain uh, needs, uh, certain specific things, like either through prayer or either through going out into the streets and blessing the homeless or or you know I just heard about a thing going on over at Valley West where where there's some people there and there's people from our church that's involved in it as well where it's a ministry where they go out and they uh, bless the people that are like living under the bridges and the homeless and the people like that and it's a bunch of different people from different churches that are just coming together and going to do that that's huge what's it called hope ministry that's right hope hope ministry so I've heard about that here recently. Um, Dad's been sharing with me about uh, 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 Pastor Joyce Lane here in town and some other folks that, that they've been getting together and, and as, as ministers ministering to, to younger ministers and things like that. There's been that unity of the, and I'll just say it this way, Joy, uh, Sister, Sister Joyce is African American. There's a unity there of the African American church and, 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 the, and the white church, if that's what you want to call or whatever you want to call those things. I don't want to get into all that, but but we're starting to see some unity come together, some things starting to take place, and we're starting to see uh, uh, the past, some of the pastors here in town that have been real good friends over the years, you know, they're getting even stronger, their friendship. So something's happening, and I believe that as the unity grows and the love for one another grows, as we come together as the body of Christ and allow our ministries, not only as an individual, our ministry as an individual, but also our ministry as a whole in the body of Christ, when we come together and we play our part in the body, we discern the body and the blood of the Lord. Amen? When we discern that, when we, we figure that out, when we get into that and step into that plan that God has, that the glory of God will increase... And it will grow, and it will come into this city in a greater manifestation. And so, you know, even myself, God's been talking to me personally about some things about this city with some of the other ministries and some stuff that I think the Lord has uh, planned for later on and down the road. Uh, not quite yet, but later on down the road concerning uh, just, just a, just a, a unity-type 
a, a city where, the, where, where people know that the churches don't fight and act stupid with each other. They don't act like daycares, classes, and things like that. Kindergarten classes. But they act like mature Christians that love one another and that want to see their city transformed. And there's been a lot of things happen over the years uh, where we did Love Madera campaign and the different things like that. We've gone out and did things like that as, as the Church of Madera and stuff like that. So we've seen some things already start to stir uh, way back, you know, years back and, and take place. But I really believe that that's going to start gaining momentum. And I really believe when it starts gaining momentum, we're going to start seeing more God results in this city. Amen? I said a lot right there. I really don't even know what I was really fully saying, but I said a lot right there, amen? And uh, the Lord knows what he's doing in this city, and I'm just his mouthpiece. I'm just his hand, his feet, his head, his eyes, his ears, his mouth, and I just want to do whatever he wants me to do in this city for whoever he wants me to do it with or for. Amen? Amen. So I really believe that this place is a glory habitation. Now, I want to read a word that was given. This 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 message, or this this. This time tonight is prophetic, so it, it might not go very long. It doesn't matter how long it goes. I'm just going to get out of me what God has been saying to me and wants me to say to us tonight. And it's not only us, but it's hitting people that are watching online, and people will hear it as the days and weeks go by. They'll be hearing what the Lord is saying uh, uh, about this city. Amen? And, it, 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 and I know it's happening in other cities as well. I'm watching revivals break out all over the place and things are happening because because God's God's looking for hungry people, man. He's looking for people that want to run with what he wants to do, that wants to run with his cause and love others. Amen. So there was a word given here June 30th, okay? So not very, you know, just I mean just <laughs> back in 2004, okay? But it wasn't just as far as the date today what today's the 2nd of July. So this was given June 30th, 2004. And this, this uh, prophecy was given by Dad, actually, here at the church. It says, there is a great healing revival coming to this city, a tremendous cloud of healing, the glory of God, and it's healing. The day will come when people will walk into this city, get within the influence of this city. They will come into the influence of that cloud. That clouds are talking about the glory of God. Amen. We can find that in the Word and several different scriptures. That cloud... And many people will get healed just coming to this town before they ever get to a church or a preacher or a healing service because that's the destiny. Yes, yes, Lord, it is the destiny of this city. Yes, that's why the enemy has come and tried to make a mockery of that. That's why he has brought so many things in here to try and do the opposite. For when people move here, they get sick. They get sick. And their lives get torn apart. Just the opposite. The enemy has tried to establish that in the spirit in this city. But we say no more, no more, no more in Jesus' name. It's the destiny of this city. It will be known as a place where people can get set free. It will be known as a place of healing and victory. And how, how long the Lord has waited and watched for that day when this place would fulfill its destiny along life's historic pathway. I've read that word so many times over the years. And um, it's a word that I've been speaking and believing for a long time. And um, it's a word that God, and I know I'm already starting to see some of that starting to take place. See, our minds, even myself right now, our minds can't even fathom of what it's going to be like when the full glory hits here. I don't really even know what to, I mean, I know it's, I mean, I guess we could say we know it's, we know it's going to be glorious. <laughs> we know it's going to be good. We know it's going to be God, and people are going to get healed. We're going to get delivered. Things are going to happen in our lives. We're going to see people get changed and healed and set free, born again, all that. But I don't think we can fathom fully when it fully hits. And see, the thing is, is I'm expecting, and this is just my heart tonight, I'm expecting for it to fully hit in our lifetime. I'm expecting it to fully hit real soon, to where we won't even know. Some of us long lifers here in Madeira, even in the Central Valley, you know, Glens and Fresno, you're in Kerman, you know, we got Chowchilla, you know, we got people from different places here in this valley, in this area. 
I, to where we won't even know what this, we won't even recognize this place when God starts to move in here. I mean, right now I'm watching, you know, uh, uh, Brother Todd, you know, Bentley, he's been with us several times. They got a, they're going into their ninth week next week of revival in, in um, Lindale, Texas right now. And um, I've been watching it pretty much at least three to four services a week. They're going, they're going Tuesday night through Sunday night. They're having services. They have Mondays off. But I've been watching, and it's just a constant flow of people. Just the place is, is filled. And it's, it probably holds about 500 people, this building they're in. This church is called Bethesda Church there. That it t- started t- but see, the whole thing is, is it's a community thing. It's not just that church. That just happens to be the place where they gather because that's where he was ministering when it all kind of hit. But there's other pastors in the community, and people are starting to, to join like that community there. And it's starting to spread. And the reason why, and I just heard Todd talking about it today, the reason why it's, it's, it's getting bigger and bigger and the fire's getting hotter and hotter and the glory's getting deeper and bigger and stronger is because of the community. It's because of the unity and the love. So God's, God's going for it. So see, what I'm trying to say is it's not just about us. It's not about just a church. It's not about who's going to host it and all this. That has nothing to do with it. It's about when is God going to do it and I'm ready for it because I want to see it. And I want to walk in love and stay in unity and do whatever I can to be a part of this move of God that's going to hit the Central Valley, Central California. Because, guys, let's just face it. We're right in the middle of this thing, man. We're right here in the middle of California. And there's so many things you can, you can, you can just think about. You know, the heart of, the heart of California. They call the Madeira, Madeira the heart of California because we're right in the center, you know. What does a heart do? A heart gives life. It pumps the blood, man. And that's what Madeira is. It's a place where it's going to give life. The devil's trying to make it look like it's not. But I'm telling you, he's being ran out of town. We're rising up. Prayer's happening. Things are happening. The body of Christ in this city is going out, and they actually are hitting the pavement. Things are happening. We're getting ready to see the harvest like we've never seen before. And this is a place where the habitation of the glory of God is resting, where the glory of God is coming down. He's resting in this place. And you got, we've got to expect it. Well, I wish it would happen. No, it's here now. It really is. We're like at the beginning, beginning stages of revival. And you're sitting here, and even when I said that right now, I thought, <laughs> I'm looking at all these empty seats. But I'm telling you, we're supposed to call things as though they are, right? Is that how it it goes? Because I always get those mixed up. Things which be not as though they were, because they are. Amen. Amen. Come to the hospital. This place is a hospital. That's what the Lord said. Amen. And so this is a place, and when, when, when God says things like this to us, like what he said to me about Madeira being a habitation of his glory, it's not just for us to go, oh, man, that's really cool, God. Thanks for sharing that to me. That's not what he wants us to do with that. He wants us to grab a hold of that. He has said things to you about this place that you need to keep decreeing and keep seeking him about and keep speaking and declaring. If he shows you something about it, then do it. If he tells you to do something about it, then do it. But if he hasn't, if he's just said it to you, then you just keep speaking it over your town or you keep speaking it over your family member or whatever it is he showed you. He wants us to do that. He spoke to us here a month or so ago, and he said, we're in a season of decreeing uh, and seeing, to decree what we see and start expecting what we see and what we decree to happen in our lives. Not just say it, but believe it and expect it to come to pass. Amen? Because he's given us the word of the, 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 word of the Lord is for us to do that. When we do that, we speak those things into existence. It's not fantasy land or I hope. It's we speak the word of God. It will be formed. And it will happen. That's why when disease shows up in your body, you just tell it to get out. And you keep telling it to get out in the name of Jesus until it gets out. doesn't matter if it takes a year, if it takes two years, if it takes one day. doesn't matter. You just keep doing the word of the Lord. And you believe it. Amen? That's faith. That's faith. That's faith. So we live in a city where there's going to be a cloud, where there is a cloud. There's a cloud here already that's hovering over the city. The glory of God's already here. Well, how do I know the glory of God's here? Because you're the carriers of the glory. It's here. It's already here. And he wants us to 
let Him manifest His glory through us so people can see it. Now, the, the definition of the word glory is of the nature and acts of God in self-manifestation. Of the character and ways of God as exhibited through Christ to and through believers. I'll read that again. Of the nature and acts of God in self-manifestation, of the character and ways of God as exhibited through Christ to and through believers. To and through believers, the glory. <laughs> See, we need to start being more aware of the glory. That's what I'm doing. I'm training myself to be more aware of the glory. Now, we can know a lot about the glory. We can know a lot about the Holy Spirit. We can know a lot about the blood of Jesus. We can know a lot about the gifts of the Spirit. We can know a lot about the fruits of the Spirit. We can know about all this stuff, and it's good to know it, but are we looking for it? Are we wanting to be in it? Are we wanting to move in it? Are we wanting it? There's a difference there. I know a lot of people that know the Word of God. They know it, but they don't live it. Or they don't want to let the Lord change them through His Word that they know where change can happen through the Word. Amen? So there's a difference between knowing about it and expecting it or living in it or wanting to be a part of God and His Word. Two different things. And so... I've been pressing in more in my personal life, just saying, God, I want to be more aware of your glory. I want to be more aware of the prophetic signs. I want to be more aware of uh, 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 your anointing. See, the glory and the anointing are two different things. They're not the same thing. You know, you, you, can, read about, you can read about the glory in the Word, and you can read about, uh, uh, you know, Moses and different things like that, like, like the Shekinah glory. Well, the Shekinah glory, when it talks about that, I like to, it, this is a good definition of it, Shekinah glory. Uh, it's seen or it's visible. The Shekinah glory is seen or visible. You hear people talk about they saw the glory cloud and they've seen things like that or mist or something like that in a service. Well, that's the Shekinah glory of God. It's, it's, it's visible. You can see it. And then you got the like the kabod. You hear that word kabod? That means like a heavy glory, a weighty glory. It's it's you feel it. It's like on you. And I, and I, I'll be honest with you, I, I've I've probably felt the glory on me or that heaviness, that weighty part more than I've seen the shekinah glory of God in my life. Doesn't mean it's not there. I've never that I know of seen a cloud like float into the service. I know it happens, and I know it's real. I know people that have seen it, and I believe in all that. I've seen like a mist a couple times where it was like real hazy, and I'm wiping my eyes going, wait a minute, what am I seeing here? Last time I saw that here was when Pastor Tom Terry was preaching last time he was here. I saw it in the building. And my eyes are good, so I know it wasn't my eyes, and I wasn't having a crying moment or anything like that. or you know, I could see good. It was just I saw this mist in here when he was ministering. It was just kind of hovering over the people. So all this stuff's real, and, and you know, I, I like Brother Hagin when he talks about, you know, a lot of us are always looking, you know, a lot of people are looking for the spectacular all the time, or the dramatic, or the dynamic all the time. And we're not really supposed to do that. We're just supposed to obey the Word, be the Word, do the Word, and all that will show up as we do it, right? So don't go by, this is something I'm having to learn, don't go by your feelings you know, well, I just, you know, I see this person moving in this, and, man, I'm doing the exact same thing this person's doing, but, man, nothing's happening, you know. Don't go by that. Just go by what the Lord has told you to do. And if you'll go by what He's told you to do, you'll have the manifestation of everything that He wants to get to you, and, and then you'll be able to, He'll be able to manifest through you whatever He wants to get to somebody else. Amen? It's really a pretty simple process. You just got to obey the Lord and want it. But I've been really seeking God and saying, okay, Lord, I'm more open to your glory. I'm more open to the anointing. I'm more open to prophetic signs, Lord. I'm more open to visitation by you, Lord. I'm, and see, I don't get scared about all this kind of stuff because you're going to know if it's a devil or if it's an angel. You're going to know it. 
Okay, I'm not seeking signs. I'm not seeking visitations. I'm not seeking any of that. I'm just telling the Lord, I'm open to that. If you need to speak to me that way or show me something or whatever, Lord, I'm open to that. And I'll, I'll share a quick story with you about a personal example. It just happened to me on Thursday. And um, concerning me just being open to, to the Lord and things like that, well, I went to my doctor's appointment last Thursday, which is a yearly uh, a blood draw. They, they take my blood every year. And so I went down there last Thursday, and the Lord's been talking to me. And some of you heard me last Sunday morning say this while I was preaching. I said that I had a, like a real supernatural experience with the Lord here a couple weeks ago, and he showed me some things uh, concerning my personal life, like mind habits and stuff like that. You know, we've been talking about fear around here and anxiety and all this kind of stuff, you know. And God's been talking to me about mind habits and how our minds just kind of, when something comes up, or even when you're just out cruising around, taking a walk down the street, just all of a sudden your mind has such a habit of shifting over into something because you've, had it, you, you, you've done that for so long it can shift over into fear, or it can shift over into worry, or it can shift over into what if, or, or whatever it is. These mind habits. And so God's been giving me revelation concerning mind, hab mind habits and stuff like that, talking about me personally. And he's been showing me, look, it's up to you if you want this to stop or not. You know my word, Mike. You know the authority you have in the blood of Jesus, what Jesus did on the cross for you. You understand all that. You've got a hold of all that by faith. You know it. You know it's true. You'll never leave it. You know that. But you've got to decide, Mike, where you want to go with those mind habits. I'll set you free from those if you'll just be diligent to have some self-control and to say no to the devil and get back over into what the truth is about your life. So he's been talking to me about this stuff. Well, I've been getting a hold of it, and some things have happened in my life where I've just felt some changes, and, and some, you know, it's like, it's like I'm getting stronger spiritually concerning that in my life. You know, we're supposed to grow spiritually, amen? And some of you might have a hold of this already, and you've gone through this, so you kind of know what I'm talking about. And maybe some of you are going through this like, we're, like I'm talking about. But mind habits that we've had for so long, it's so easy just to live that way because it's just part of our, you know, it's just a routine, and that's just how it goes. But when we realize, wait a minute here, this is 99.9% .9 of the problem that I'm having, and God starts talking to you about it, and you start to realize you can get free from it if you'll just control your mind. And some of you are probably looking at me like, and you're a pastor, and you didn't, you, you know, you, whatever, you know what I mean? Really, Mike? You know, it's taking you this long to figure that out, you know? But see, sometimes we get focused on something, and we don't hear from the Lord. But when we keep seeking Him, and seeking Him, and seeking Him, and seeking Him for it, He will reveal it to us. He will. And He knows when to do it. When we're ready for it. Okay, so... Anyways, it's hard to explain because it's, when it's something you're dealing with, it's hard to explain, but, but mine happens. So anyways, I go to the doctor on Thursday, and um, I had been working on, um, because every time I would go to the doctor, I would start, it would just be that feeling. I wouldn't go into full panic or nothing like that, but it would just be that inside feeling where you can kind of feel your heart, doom, 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 doom. you ever get that feeling? It's kind of an anxiety, you know, you're kind of edgy, just kind of not feeling normal, you know what I mean? And, and you know, you might be just sitting down, relaxing, and no big deal, but on the inside you're going, doo, 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 you know what I mean? It's that trauma that you had sensed, that I, that I had went through. You know, you, a lot of us have gone through a trauma in our life or something like that, so you know what I'm talking about, you know? And so it brings back memories, it brings back things, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And the devil tries to play on all that stuff and runs his mouth and all that, right? So... I had been, the past couple of weeks, just saying, when I go to the doctor this time, I'm not going to allow my mind to go over into that realm anymore of thinking like that. I'm going to go down there, and if it tries to come on me, I'm going to resist it, and I'm just going to stay focused on what the Lord has said. So I go down there, and this is probably one of the best doctor visits I've ever had. There was one point I was sitting there, and all of a sudden I start to felt my I felt that feeling on the inside, and I said, "No, my mind's not going to go there." Lord, thank you for peace, and immediately it left. So I'm in, I'm on the inside going, "Yes, man, I'm getting victory over this." God, thank you for your revelation for me. Thank you for showing me this stuff. So I, I started, I'm you know I'm winning in this, right? So it was a great visit and all that and all this. So 
I, I, I get up. They call me in. You know how you got to go into the little waiting room there and wait for the doctor? And it usually takes about a half hour to an hour, you know. And you've already been waiting an hour, you know what I mean? <clears throat> and so, so <clears throat> I go into this. I'm walking in. I'm following the nurse into the room. And I just kind of, and I don't ever really pay attention. I just go into the room and sit down, right? You know, like how you, if you go to the doctor, you just go, you, ain't, you know, whatever. You're just like, in your mind, you're going, let's just get this over with. I want to get the heck out of here, you know. And so I'm walking into the room, and I just kind of looked up. When I looked up at the doorpost, I saw the, the, the room number. And I don't really ever pay attention, but I saw the room number 10. And uh, the first thing I thought of when I saw the number was football, because that's the number I wore when I played football, was number 10. That was my favorite number, football. So that's the first thing I thought of. And just, but, but I noticed that when I saw it, it was just there was something kind of leaped on the inside of me at, at first, but I didn't really understand what was going on. So I just kind of whatever. I went and I sat down, did everything you needed. The, the, the nurse did everything, talked to the nurse for about five, ten minutes because I knew the guy and this and that, blah, blah, blah. He left. And as I'm sitting there, they left the door open, so the door's open. And as I'm sitting there, just kind of relaxing and waiting, I just kind of looked up. When I looked up at the door, I saw the number 10 on the door. And as soon as I saw that, I heard the Lord say to me, find out what the number 10 means in the Bible. So I got in there, and there's several verses, several things about the number 10, this and that. And uh, <clears throat> when I got in there and I started digging around in there, <clears throat> that number 10, excuse me, that number 10 means, like, to complete a cycle. Man, you kidding me? There we go. It means to complete a cycle or completeness or something that's over. Okay? So when I read that, the first thing I thought of was, of course, the situation I was in right there at that moment for my life was just because the word of the Lord has already said it in, in a thousand other different words to me over the years since 2008, that this leukemia thing is over with. This whole deal is over with. It's done. It's not coming back. It's gone. It's over. So I'm just like, okay, Lord, thank you, man. I just, you know, it's when God will do things like that for you. He gave me a prophetic sign that day, you know, to just speak to me and bless me. But see, how many of y'all know God will always give you something before something's getting ready to happen? You all know where I'm headed, right, don't you? <laughs> So God gives me this. I'm just like, yeah, all right, thank you, God. I know it's true, man. Thank you. I'm totally healed. Everything's great. You know, it's not coming back. Praise God and blah, blah, blah. So I started rehearsing the prophetic words I'd gotten over all the years from different people, even here at this church and other people and things he said to me. Just thinking on it, man. Meditating on the goodness of the Lord, the love of God, you know, his good word. And then, so about 10 minutes later, my doctor comes in. He's like, he's like, man, Mike, your blood, wow, it's perfect. It looks so good. Your antibodies are at the very top. I mean, they're the highest. Man, that is awesome. And I go, yeah, that sounds about right. And he goes, he goes, yeah, I guess that does sound about right. And I said, it does. It sounds about right. I know, I know that's true. You know, and he's all, all right, well, we're, we're glad, you know, or whatever. And then I go, <clears throat> and then I go, now keep in mind the prophetic sign he just gave me, right? <clears throat> so then I go, yeah, that reminds me, doctor. Um, man, or he goes, he goes, You've been coming down here a while, haven't you? And I said, yeah, you diagnosed me in January of 08, and I've been coming. I said, that reminds me, how, many, like, how much longer do I got to come down here once a year? Like, I mean, this is just a waste of time. You know, this is, how much, how much, he goes, oh, 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 you're, you're, you're coming every year because this is going to come back. That's what he said to me. And, and, uh, uh, so, now, I know this is going to sound crazy, and if he ever watches this, I, I love you, Doc. Don't worry. You don't understand, but maybe someday you will. But um, when he said that to me, it was almost like a demon. Now, you've got to understand, I'm not saying that he's a demon-possessed man. I'm just saying that he's going by medical science or whatever he has seen over the years. And... and um. You know, and I just kind of go, uh, nah, like that, you know, and he, and he kind of looked at me, and then he started to talk again, and I just totally blocked him out. I don't even remember anything else he just said because I started looking in my spirit because it actually made me mad, to be honest with you. And, um, and I knew on the inside, so as I'm sitting there on the inside, I'm going, I can't go off on this guy and tell him the truth because he's not going to understand one word I say to him about the blood of Jesus and about this kind of stuff. I'm not even going to try. 
So that's, that's why I didn't hear anything else he said, because on the inside of me, I'm, I'm just I'm stirring like that on the inside. So he uh, examines me, everything's fine like normal or whatever. And uh, so I leave, and I get in the car, and I'm, I'm mad. I'm upset, you know. I got, it's kind of like I talked about, you got the devil here and an angel here, that kind of deal. So the devil's trying to penetrate, right? He's mad. So he just mouthed off to me. You know, it was really a, 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 a demon, a demonic, like my dad called it the other day. He told me, he was really what that was, Mike, was a, 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 a demonic prophetic word <laughs> from the doctor, really. And uh, so in the car, I made sure my windows rolled up in the parking lot. Nobody can hear me. And I just came after the devil because I was ticked. And I said, you lying loser, you're mad, you lose, ha ha. I just started laughing and just said, you use the doctor, but you ain't going to get to me. And I just started coming after him and just, and just going at him with the word of the Lord. And so, so I called Ma, I called dad on the way home and I said, check this out. And I told him what I just told you. And so, of course, dad is awesome. I mean, we got a good pastor here and, 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 and he, he just understands a lot more than I understand. And, uh. So he just started telling me, he goes, he goes, Mike, and I, and I knew this before he said this, but it was so cool because he expounded on it. But, you know, God gave me that prophetic sign ahead of time because he knew the doctor was going to say what he was going to say to me. But it was way weird how he said it. It was almost like he got mad at me because I asked him that. That's why I said it was like kind of creepy feeling and weird. It was like different. It was almost like a manifestation, but. Not like slithering on the floor type manifestation, but almost like a, just a, like, you know, someone just, a gut reaction, like someone gets mad or, or, you know, just real quick, all of a sudden, like his voice tone changed and everything. It was weird. And so, um, the Lord started, see, the Lord will start showing you things ahead of time. So when the devil pops his head up and tries to mouth off, you can just laugh (laughs) and say no, because devil... It's not coming back, number one. And then I start going down the list of everything that's been said to me, which really makes him mad because he can't do nothing about that. And then I just go right back to the freshest one he just gave me on Thursday afternoon, the number 10. Completed course. It's over. It's been complete. It's done. You're going into a new cycle or a new season. So why did I share that? I share that I want to encourage you, number two, to show you that when you start, I had no idea going down there that God was going to use a number on a door to build me up. Can you imagine, and I heard Grandma Pat say this because I was talking to her before service today about this. She said, can you imagine someone, when, if a doctor says somebody to someone that's not a believer, what that does to them? Something like that? Like gives them a death sentence almost. But see, when, when the doctor or a circumstance or whatever says something to us, we know if we know the Word of God, if we stand on the Word of God, if we believe the Word of God, that what the Word of God says is true. It doesn't matter what any devil in hell, doesn't matter what doctor, doesn't matter what lawyer, doesn't matter what your neighbor, doesn't matter what anybody says, if it's contrary to the Word of the Lord. There's no power in it. Unless you give it power by receiving it. I can give those words that my doctor said uh, Thursday power if I just receive it, meditate on it, and live by it. And it will defeat me. And I'll live in torment and misery for the rest of my life. But we have a choice. See, God is wanting His children, He's wanting us to be open. Be open to the way that he wants to minister. The Bible says there in 1 Corinthians 12, it says that those gifts of the Spirit that he's given us, it's at his will when he decides to let you move in that gift or when he decides to allow that gift to come out of you and to manifest into somebody else's life or to manifest in your life. It's his will, but it's our duty to seek his will and to be open to his will. Don't go out and try to make something happen. Go out and just obey God and do what he tells you to do. And I know sometimes we've got to step out by faith. I know sometimes we'll just have that little witness on the inside where it's like we know. That's like that deal on Thursday. When I saw that number, there was something different about that. It wasn't just, oh, I saw the number 10, you know. 
there was, when I saw it, something left on the inside of me. There was something different about it, but I didn't know at first the quickening. But see, God knows what to get to you when He needs to get it to you. And I'll be honest with you, I wasn't having a holy moment at that time. I was just at a doctor's office going, God, I want to get the heck out of here, man. i got to get back to the fireworks booth. You know, that's what I was thinking. You know, but I, I was open to the Lord while I was there. So it's the, the Lord's duty. It's Jesus' duty to provide and to protect for us. It's, it's his duty to provide to us if we need a word, if we need a sign, if we need food, if we need finances, if we need peace. It's his duty to provide whatever it is we need. But it's our duty to cooperate <laughs> with what he wants to do and how he wants to do it and, and how it should be done. But see, we are living in a season, and I'm going to say it, of, a great, of great outpouring of the glory of the Lord. Be open to it. Be open to it. He's bringing it, and he's bringing it through us. You know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Hear about, well, just before Father's Day, you know, me and me and me and Dad and Ron and CJ, we did a little a thing on Father's Day, and talking about fathers and in 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 families and just what what a duty of a father is, and, and then also how to honor your father, and just we kind of hit several little things there during this little show that we did on the fire starters that day. There are so many hungry people looking for love. From a father. And we kind of talked in that session, we kind of talked a little bit about natural fathers, but we mostly talked about our, our heavenly father and what he'll do for us and who he is and how he is. And um, we, I don't know, there's been like, it's just been, I don't know, a few weeks or something, four weeks or something like that, but I mean, there's been like, and, 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 and in, the, in the big scheme of things, it's not that many views, but there's been like, like almost 2,500 or 3,000 views of that little segment we did oh six thousand now okay see i haven't checked in a, in a good while and that's just from some little old show that we do here and you know and and nobody knows who he is hardly nobody knows who i am for sure and you know more people know about ron than they do me and all that you know we're just up there talking about the love of the father and no telling who's watched that in some dark room some place, maybe some child, some woman that was maybe beat by her father or some, some deal, that craziness that went on in someone's life and how God just restored. But see, that's the moment we're living in right now. See, he's looking for genuine people, not glamorous people. He doesn't care what kind of clothes we wear. He doesn't care how rich we are, where we're at, where we live. He doesn't care about any of that. He just wants to use people that are genuine, that love him. He'll use anybody. He'll use a five-year-old child that believes in him to raise the dead if he has to. That's the kind of God he is. That's the kind of time we're living in right now. Anything can happen right now in the glory. I've been out this fireworks booth all week, and, and I've been sitting there, and I've been waiting for the opportunity to minister to somebody, and it hasn't came yet. It hasn't came yet. But every time I'm out there, I'm waiting. I'm waiting, just looking around. Well, that guy over there looks kind of, but I just didn't have a stirring, you know. Just it wasn't there. It just wasn't there. It doesn't mean you have to have something every time. You can just go up to somebody and bless them because you love them no matter what. But but I like to know when God's involved. That's just me. That's how I do it. There's some people that are just so anointed they can get a doorknob saved. You know what I mean? You know I mean, you know, and I get that. But, but sometimes I'm just the kind of person I like to wait and just to be still and know that this is what the Lord wants me to do because I know if he does, there's going to be something that's going to happen. You know what I mean? I don't know if that makes sense to you. Maybe you're different, and that's fine. But I've just been waiting because I know that we're living in a time where God is pouring out his glory. And he's pouring it out through us, and not just in church services. It's out there ready to partake of and ready to, to be released and, and unleashed in the marketplace. And so, let me, let me have you turn to a scripture real quick. Just let me read a couple scriptures, and then I'm going to wrap it up. I, I, I just, 
I'm just sharing what, what's been on my heart. Look at Psalms. Uh, Psalms 26. Psalms 26. Let me get a drink. <clears throat> Psalms 26. Look at verse uh, <clears throat> verse 8. Psalms 26, verse 8 says, Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. See, you could take the scripture here. You could talk about the house of God, which we gather together here in unity in the house of the Lord, but also about your own house, your own home, you, your temple. Who you are, the glory of God dwells in you. It, it seems like when we gather together as a body, and the Word talks about that, how when unity, there's, there's power when unity's together. There's a manifestation of the anointing and power when unity, when we come together as the body and we worship God. But there's also power when we step out in our own individual parts of the body and do our part in that body. You want to talk about real major glory is when you step out because you're discerning who you are in the body of Christ. And that gift that's on the inside of you starts operating. Man, there's nothing like that. That's awesome. That's, that's so fulfilling. Because you see the hand of the Lord touching people's lives through you. That's major. That's huge. So I like to read this little commentary here about that verse. It says, you notice the words here, I have loved. Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. I have loved. This gives us a glimpse of and to the reason David was a delight to the heart of God. When love for the house of God is a high priority in one's life, God responds with his own unfailing love or mercy. When God, God sees the heart of David, God sees the heart of you, of me. When he sees that heart towards him, guys, he fills the house. He fills you. With his glory, because he's so in love with you and he's so pleased and well pleased with you because he sees your heart. He wants to do nothing but hover over you, pour out on the inside of you who he is to bless you, but also to bless others to give it away. Can't be, can't be glory hogs, you know what I mean? You got to give it, amen. And then you can look at, uh, let's look at Ephesians 2. You know, you could get into all these scriptures and like Haggai about the latter glory, the former glory, the glory filling the house. You can get into the scriptures there uh, uh, about, you know, um, like the Second Chronicles where the, the glory came in so strong in the temple that the priests fell out, you know, and people fell out. That's all true. That's the Shekinah glory of God. That's the Kabod of God. That's the heavy glory, the weighty glory. You know, you could get into all that stuff. I've been in meetings where that's happened. I've been cruising down the road where I felt the glory of God come on me where I had to pull over at times. You know, just stuff like that. That's all part of it but see now let me let me let me teach you something here real quick and i learned this from my dad if you're out and about and you're just going along your day mowing your yard driving down the street working or whatever and you feel the glory come on you stop if you can right where you're at and find out why it's on you sometimes it might just be because god just wants to bless you with his presence and it just, oh, man, it just refreshes you. Maybe it'll make you laugh. Maybe you'll weep. Maybe, you know, what you'll fall out. I don't know, whatever, however it manifests. Maybe you'll shake and bake and quake. I don't know. You know, maybe you'll roll. You know, I don't know. Holy roller. But stop and ask the Lord, man. Amen? <laughs> what? Why, Lord? What, what, why are you doing this? What am, why am I feeling this? What is this, God? Is there something you want me to do, say? Is it just for me? What is it? And he'll reveal it to you. I've found out that when it happens to me, and I learned this a long time ago from Dad, that when it happens to do that, and I've found out a lot of times it's just for me. Sometimes he'll follow up by saying something to you because his presence is on you. Or you'll just laugh. Or a lot of times, mostly if it comes on me, what I do, I just sit back and just go, ah. I just receive it, man. I just soak it all in. Sometimes I'll laugh, you know. 
But it's true. You can take a drink of it anytime you want. The river of living water, man. The river of joy. Take a drink of the new wine anytime you want to. It's free. It's on tap, man. It's ready. It's ready to go, man. He wants to fill us with the new wine. Hallelujah. Take a new wine break every day. Just God, ha, ah, let me drink. You know, you see Todd Bentley. Ah, drink it in, you know. What's he doing? He's just demonstrating that he wants all of God and all he has. That's all it is, you know. But it's the truth. So, but Ephesians, let me get over there real quick. I told you Ephesians chapter 2, right? Ephesians. Yep. Okay, Ephesians chapter 2. Look at verse 22 here. It says, look at verse 21 actually. In whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. The body of Christ. He's talking about the body of Christ here. He's building us together. We need to get together in unity. We need to get together in the love of the Lord. And we need to be that powerhouse, really. We need to be that power body of who we really are supposed to be. There'll be critics. There'll be ones that don't want to. All that, whatever. That's just life. I'm not focusing on that. I'm focusing on who's hungry and who wants to go after it. That's just like coaching an athletic team. You're going to find out who really wants to play and who doesn't want to play within the second, second week usually of practice. Sometimes it's usually the first week of football practice you really find out who wants to play and who doesn't. You can pretty much tell the ones that are weeded out, you know, because they can't handle the running, the hitting, all that stuff, you know. Crybabies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't say that. Someone else said that. Just, just for note. Amen? But who's hungry? That's who I'm looking for. That's who I want to hang around. The ones that want it. The ones that want to go for it. And I know we have a lot of people in this church that are hungry. We have a lot of people in this, this fellowship that are ready to get after it. I mean, I, I know because I hear story after story, and it seems like weekly, from some at least one person or more in this congregation that something awesome happened out in the marketplace during the week with them. That's a good thing. That's a real good thing. If I can consistently, as a pastor here and the leader at this church, hear that, that, bless, that, keeps, that blesses me. I'm not going to say it keeps me going, but it's part of what keeps me going. It blesses me. So I know we got a moving and shaking church. we got a fellowship here that has been trained well, and we're taught the Word, and, and we love the Lord, and uh, you know, we see God manifesting through us. Amen. But see, see, Jesus exercises His power through the body, through the church. You know, in these verses here, that's basically what it's talking about. We're, we're, being, uh, we're being built, a place of God in the Spirit. We're being built to live in the Spirit, but for God to also live by His Spirit on the inside of us because it's the Spirit of the Lord that brings uh, uh, salvation. It's the Spirit of the Lord that brings love, that brings peace, that brings, I mean, the whole list. You can st stand here and list everything that God has and who He is. It brings all that by us as we live out of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, my encouragement, my saying tonight to you is, I want you <clears throat> to start expecting that the Central California, that Madera, California is a habitation of the glory of the Lord. I'm prophesying that tonight. I'm declaring that in the airwaves tonight. I'm saying that Madera is a habitation of the glory of God, and I'm saying that the people in Madera and in Central California will get an understanding of what the Lord wants to do in the Central Valley. That every person will come, that the harvest will come in, that us as harvesters will go out and harvest, and that we will be a walking, living, loving disciple of Jesus Christ. That's what I'm decreeing and declaring tonight in the name of Jesus. That this place is a place where when people come into it, like that prophetic word we said earlier, that they'll get healed, saved, and set free when they come into the sphere or the region of this city. Because Madera, California is known for a glory habitation. Amen. 
I don't care what the news says about Madeira. I don't care what the state statistics say about Madeira. I don't care what the police chief and the mayor. I love the mayor. He's my friend. I don't care what anybody says negative about Madeira. I say what God says about Madeira. Now, I know the mayor would agree with me. So with the police chief, you're absolutely right. He actually lives right around the corner for me. So if you come across this, I love you. Proud of you, Mr. Chief. Amen. He's a man of God. I just, he's just, I was just saying that as an authority figure. It is, but I'm saying that Madeira is a place of the glory. You know, you hear about the hot spots for the Internet, you know? Well, I got a hot spot. That means you can, you can uh, what is it, how, what's the exact terminology? Yeah, you can get your own Internet. Like if you're out, maybe you're up in Montana and you have a hot spot out in the middle of nowhere, you know, for your phone or whatever. They call it a hot spot. Well, I say this is a hot spot for the Holy Spirit. Nothing can stop it. No interference. Nothing. That this is a hot spot for the glory of God, man. And just like revival fires are breaking out, all over little places around here. And a lot of these places, they're breaking out. No one's ever heard of them. No one's, you know, I still don't even know the name of the pastor of that church that Todd's at right now. I don't even know his name. But it doesn't matter. They're open to the glory and things are happening. People are coming in from all over the world to get in that. It's, and it's growing momentum. That's the thing. And I'm planning, I'm hoping to get back there at the end of July, hopefully for a couple days, just to get in it. Because good things are, I mean, things are happening, man. It's just powerful. Uh, uh, some little thing broke out in Atlanta just here last week. Todd went to a church down there because he was fulfilling an obligation to minister there on a Sunday. He went down there, things broke out. They're going into their second week already of meetings. People are coming. Miracles and things are happening. Just things are happening. You know? Amen. And so, that's what God's doing with us, the body of Christ. It's happening through us. And it wants to happen even more through us. So expect it. Don't get into, well, I just go to church and I'm a good Christian. That's good. Expect God every day to do something through you for somebody. And if, and if it doesn't happen that day, then you got the next day. Amen? Amen? Don't give up. Just keep pushing. Keep seeking. Keep praising. Keep loving. Keep glo- giving them glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Keep growing on the inside. Let him help you. Let him grow you. Want to experience everything he's got for your life. There's nothing wrong with that. He wants us to. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Dad, do you have anything? Amen. Hey, keep me in prayer, by the way. Uh, me and my family are leaving for vacation. We'll be gone the 5th through the 19th of this month. And uh, we're going on just a, a trip across the country, really, just as a family. And, and, uh, but I'm going to be speaking um, at uh, Tony, Pastor Tony and, and Mary Kroger's church next Sunday in Sedalia, Missouri. And so uh, keep, keep me in prayer because I really feel like there's gonna, something's going to happen, man, next Sunday. I just, I'm really excited about the Lord showing me and talking to me. So just keep my family in prayer while we travel and, and uh We'd appreciate that. Amen. Thank you, Father. You know, the reason up there on the stage on the wall, the word glory is there is because the Lord told us to put that there. And I said, why? He said, because the goal for everyone in this, you know, in this time and in this generation should be the glorious church. The glorious church. Jesus is not coming back until the church is walking in the glory. Now, what is the glory? It's how Jesus walked when he was here. Amen. He, he, said, he came to the end of his life, and he said, Father, I have glorified you on the earth. And the Lord told us to put that up there for us to see that as a goal where we're going. Now, he also told me years and years ago, and you've, you've heard me tell this, how that I was asking him about the church, whether we were doing things right and I was actually kind of going through a time of, you know, wondering, am I missing it here and all that kind of thing. And the Lord told me, he said, what, he said, your church is like a seed planted in this city, and it's been growing, and I've been, you know, developing it. And he said, when the day comes, he said, there's a harvest season for your church. And he said, when the day, the day when Isaiah 60, verses 1 and 2 are happening in the earth, that's when you're going to see your church in the fullness of its harvest. 
And Isaiah 61 and 2, of course, is the, the scripture. It says, Arise and shine, your light has come, because the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen upon you. And we get excited about his glory coming on us, but the very first word in that first verse is arise. And arise means change your position. And so we are in a season now, you know, before the Azusa Street outpouring happened back in the, in the early 1900s, they had a big prayer revival going on. People were praying by the thousands down in that L.A. area even. And, <clears throat> and one of the leaders, I'm trying to think of his name, I can't think of it right now, but he said one day the Lord spoke to him and he said, revival is rushing by you just like a rushing river. Step in. See, we're waiting for revival to happen, and God's waiting for us to step in. And that's what Mike was talking about tonight, is revival's all around us all the time. We have the life of God. We can revive anything. We can revive a business. We can revive our family. We can get revived ourselves. That can happen because of who he is in us. But we have to arise, and that's what the Lord's been saying. Step into that glory by faith. Begin to say, I am, because you are part of the glorious church. The glory may not be in full manifestation yet, but it's in you. He's in you. Romans chapter 8 says that he has glorified us. Amen? And so we need to, and, that, and that's what he was saying to us about when he spoke to him that one day, and he said, your church is not a library, it's a hospital. And that's, that's the, the focus for our church, is that God wants people to come in here and get healed and set free from physical, emotional, whatever, Whatever area of life they're sick in or they've been attacked by the devil, God wants is wanting us to be that place where they can come and get healed and go back out into life well. But that's going to happen in the glory. So it's up to us, and even if it's just the number of people that are here tonight, to start saying, I am a part of the glorious church. I am going to arise this week, and I'm going to shine. God is going to shine out of me somehow this week. Whether he shines through my prayers or he causes me to encounter somebody, I lay hands on them and they get healed. See, we've got to decide that now's the time because it is the time. And as we begin to do this, as we be, and we're starting to do it. I agree with Mike. I'm encouraged. I'm seeing people in this church stand up and say, you know what? When I go into the restaurant, I'm listening to God when I go in that restaurant. And when he quickens that waitress to me that I need to pray for her, I'm going to pray for her. And we've been hearing miraculous, supernatural things happen. But it, it's a time right now for us to begin to manifest that. And when people start arising and shining, other Christians are going to go, wait a minute. I'm in the same camp they're in. I'm in the same kingdom they're in. I can arise with them and shine myself. So somebody's got to decide to be the pioneer. Somebody's got to be the tip of the spear. Somebody's got to be willing. And I pray that that's us. We're not any better than anybody else here in town. I pray, for, I, I, I pray that every church will rise up and do this. But God's saying to us, that's what it's really all about. Amen? Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, one other thing, Brother Lonnie, I, as he was preaching tonight, I believe the Lord started speaking to my heart about you and about your family. Um, and, of course, I don't know you, but here's what I feel he said to me, that there's a, there's a heritage and an inheritance that uh, belongs to your bloodline or belongs to your family that God has intended for your family to have. And just like all of us in our family lineages and our family heritage, there's the enemy's come and attacked, and he's done things, and he's hindered some things. He's been able to sidetrack things and even withhold things. But what the Lord was sharing with me is that in this day and hour, God is going to restore the heritage that he has, for, has had for your family to you. And he's going to even take away from the enemy things the enemy's been able to keep or uh, push aside. He's going to bring it to you in your day. And as you walk in that spiritual heritage that God gives you or is giving you, and you begin to, to receive that from him as he reconnects you with that, it's going to produce the inheritance, the fullness of the inheritance and the blessing of God in your life. Because he's ordained for that to happen. And I'll just say it this way. There are things that people in your lineage could have done, could have been a part of, but for whatever reason they weren't. And God's saying, I've still got that. 
See, the gifts and callings are without repentance. doesn't matter how bad we mess up. God will just take it down to the next generation and give it to somebody else if he has to. And he's bringing a bunch of that stuff down to you. And as you follow him, as you listen to him, you keep that heart of just doing things his way. He's going to bring you into a fullness of what he has for you. Amen. Just stretch your hands out toward Lonnie. Can we just pray for you? Amen. Father, thank you for Lonnie. Lord, I just met him tonight. I don't know anything about him other than he's a brother in the Lord. You've called him to minister in the way he's ministering. But, Father, I thank you for the heritage. That, that what the devil might say is a lost heritage, it's not a lost heritage. Father, you never lose anything. And I thank you, yeah, that's it. That's the anointing of God right there in Jesus' name. I thank you for the glory of God coming upon him, the angels being activated around him. And, Lord, I thank you that from this point forward, there's much change and activation taking place in his life and reconnection, God, God with him. Whatever you have to uh, or need to do to get things over to him and lead him, we thank you for the Holy Spirit doing that exactly. Let those angels go, Father, before him. And let them uh, move things around. I thank you. I, I claim that favor, Father, you have for him. Let the favor of God be upon him. And thank you for the key of David operating in his life and the doors that are open before him, Father, in Jesus' name. And I thank you that he'll not be discouraged by anything the enemy would say or people would do. But, Lord, he will walk forward and follow you into that which you have for him and for his family. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Amen. I, b I believe that. Yeah, that's part of it. It's, it's the, all that God had for his bloodline. It's coming down to him. And, you know, that's happening with all of us if we'll receive it. Because as it says in Hebrews 11, our spiritual lineage in Hebrews 11 of faith, at the end it says that they all, that they without us cannot be perfected. So it's in our hands to receive that. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's just stand up. Thank you, Father. Shikarabasa. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the glory days. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just, just release right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, this message that you've spoken tonight, this prophetic word, Lord. I thank you that as I've released it tonight by the orders of you, Father, I thank you that every person in this place and everyone that hears this in the days to come, God, I thank you that they get a revelation of this on the inside, Lord. I thank you that, like the word says, rise and shine for the light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. And it says that people, the Gentiles, will see. They'll see the glory and the light of God on us. And they'll come running to us because they need Jesus. And so, Lord, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus Christ that Madeira, that our homes, that our region, this, this Central Valley, God, I thank you that it is a habitation for your glory. And I thank you for all the other ministries that are hooked up with you, Father God, in this valley, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that you are stirring the harvesters to get the harvest. And Lord, we thank you for a great outpour. We thank you that stadiums, high school stadiums, will be filled across this valley, God, with miracles, signs, and wonders, and salvation, and healings, Lord. And there'll be a, 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 there'll be a window of glory opened over these stadiums, God, where the glory of the Lord will come in, Lord, and will revolutionize and change cities, God, from the smallest cities to the biggest cities in this valley, Lord. Let the glory of the Lord be poured out in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I thank you that every carrier of your glory in this place tonight, Lord, just gives it away on a daily basis, Lord. Whether if it's in deed or if it's in word or whatever it is, however you want us to, to, uh, to demonstrate your glory, Lord, we are open to you. We're open to the gifts of the Spirit to function through us. We're open to the things of God to be manifest in us in the name of Jesus. Lord, I speak this word over every person, Father. And I thank you, Lord, that we're in this together. 
And then we go out as army and soldiers in the army of God. And we take every place that you set our foot upon, Lord. In Jesus' name, we thank you for glory harvesters. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen.